and um, I can do something with it. If, um, if it's not zero, then I know I'm going to accept the event. Otherwise, let it fall through. <clears throat> and so then down here, I have basically this thing. It's, it's a, I call it swipe ratio. It's basically the distance that um, the view has been translated in proportion to the, the width of it. So because I, I want to I wanna be able to know that the view has gone a certain point, it's animating off the screen on its own if I, if I lift my finger up. And we don't want to translate it if the distance is greater than zero. This um, view pager stuff is in here if you wanted to pat if your root view contained a view pager, you want to make it so that it's only going to do that unless you're on the, um, the zero index so that it can freely translate back uh, scroll back and forth within the pages itself. And then on action up, um, if I have a translation, I, f I go over to this method called finish gesture that just says if I've gone at least 40% of um, the distance, then animate it off. Otherwise, basically, you just let it get snapped back. So if I go this far, it doesn't let me go. But if I go any further than that, then it goes away. Um, here we have a little, uh, it's basically kind of like a Tinder swipe. How do I get back out of here? It's not letting me get out of here. Come on. And a lot of this logic is um, really similar for the uh, this little card swiping thing. <laughs> I basically have two images. Um, that are just inside of a relative layout. <laughs> storing the um, storing the down and the new translation values, and <clears throat> for this one, where we just want to know that it's that the translation is either higher or lower than zero, because we want it to, want it to go either left or right. Um, there's this other method that I, I made called enable all parents and disable all parents. That's necessary time sometimes, Ian, do you remember when we were talking about um, on, on Slack that translation or that touch issue you were having? No, this was, this was like a, a couple of weeks ago. You were asking me about the little, the. <laughs> 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 no, this was a few weeks ago. But I think he's going to remember a few weeks ago. The, 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 the recursive function to uh, call dispatch such event on the parents. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> so no. Anyways, so, so, yeah, yeah, so sometimes, like, there, there's, this, there's this one activity where we had um, a view pager. A pull to refresh view and a list view, and I needed swipe to delete, and I needed to be able to manage touch events for all of those. Um, so the little cell inside that I was wanting to swipe to delete was getting all the touch events were getting robbed from the view pager, the list, and everything. So um, you can you can tell you can ask a view to tell its parent to basically let you let it have. Uh, control of the touch events with um, by calling request disallow intercept touch event. So if uh, if a parent um, has a intercept touch event method that's basically um, 
not allowing the touch events to get dele delegated down to the children, the child can request the parent to do that anyway. So this is kind of just going up the view tree and um, either enabling or, disenab or disabling that. <coughs> Here in these translations, um, I'm just set, uh, setting the X and Y, of the new difference, and then uh, rotating it a little bit times the ratio. That's how you get the cool little uh, this effect. And then um, the animations are really simple. Just a little interpolator, and then you're setting the scale. Or I'm sorry, translation. Where am I at? Up here. Does anybody have any questions? I know that was kind of fast and not as uh, thorough. The, uh, the touch delegate, um, how does the bounding box work on that? Is the rectangle centered and you can set like the left and top to as well? You're just setting like right and bottom, right? Um, yeah, so, so basically, yeah. It's. Um, it doesn't it's seem obvious. That, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that comes, that, that, was, that was actually taken right from the documentation. It's basically a rectangle that you would put on top of the view. So um, you would specify like the size of, of the rectangle, and then, yeah, it would be centered. And then uh, the disallowing um, touch intercept, that seems extremely uh, dangerous as far as like figuring out what in the hell caused that to happen. Like you just some view that you bring in and unknowingly disable everything below it. Um, well, that's that's. I mean, that does get that does get tricky. You kind of have to be know exactly what's going on when you start doing stuff like that. We need like a few frameworks. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, also, this is on GitHub. If anybody wants to go, just look at it and play with it. shouldn't just hand you a laptop without giving you the right connector. And then it's on that side. Okay. All right, so my presentation is on uh, Adobe Air uh, for mobile game development. Probably a lot of you know that you can use Adobe Air for mobile game, game development, but you never really considered it. So I'm going to try to get you to consider Adobe Air. So when I say Adobe Air, it's just kind of like a, a cover-up for Flash games. Adobe Air is Action Script, I'm referring to Action Script 3, and um, all Flash games remain Action, Action Script 3. But I think it's a very powerful uh, way to create mobile games. So why use Adobe Air? So number one is free. Of course, you can use, uh, you can use uh, Unity or other platforms, but the most appealing thing about creating mobile games with, uh, with Flash, with Adobe Air, is that it's free and a lot of the tools are free. So it's cross-platform, right? You code once and you can deploy to everything. You can deploy to iOS, deploy to Android, deploy to Facebook, and also the thousands of Flash portals. So it's used by pros and, uh, and indies. <laughs> Some games that have, been, that have uh, used Adobe Air, the biggest one is uh, Angry Birds Star Wars, and those are some other pretty big titles. So um, I just want to bring this to your attention. So Kingdom Rush is a Flash game, and a lot of people think Flash is dead, and no one any, a, anymore plays Flash games because everyone play, is playing mobile games. But Kingdom Rush got 60 million plays. 
uh, and this is on one Flash portal, Armor Games. 60 million plays, that's more than the number of downloads Crossy Road has on Android. But if you look in the top right corner, available on App Store, iPad and iPhone. So it's a great way to deploy to all platforms and use these Flash portals um, to promote your mobile game. So if you're going to make games with uh, Adobe Air, um, there's no like game engine. But there are tons of libraries. The best one that I found is Starling, and Starling is free. So why would you use Starling? Uh, it makes multi-touch easy, textures, sprites, tweens, filters, etc. Um, it's just it's just a library. So all you gotta do is import it, and you can start using all the features of Starling. So how would you make um, an, an Adobe Air game? You can use Flash Builder. You can use Flash Develop, and then you can use Flash Professional. It's trying to sneak in there, but I wouldn't use Flash Professional. Once you start using Flash Professional, you'll probably get lazy, start doing vector art, and um, it's better to stay within um, an interface like Flash Builder or Flash Develop uh, because there are tons of tools to do uh, art, and I feel like Flash Professional is better for doing art and animation than just for actually programming. So um, Flash Develop, there you go. It's another free tool to get you all the way to deploying to every platform for free. So this is the link to Starling. I'm not going to talk too much about Starling. If you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, there's a ton of great documentation and tutorials that will literally help you release your first app. And there's uh, Flash Developer right there. It's open source. Um, there's my email. Um, I got a couple of uh, <laughs> couple of jokes here, and um, I had to put in a goat. I'm surprised no one put in a goat. Yeah. So yeah. we have a St. Patrick's <laughs> goat. Isn't that mall by Sanford like have all those books outside? I mean, I I don't know, but it was it's serious talk. I'm not gonna lie. So thank you for doing yeah. the I uh, I released the game using Starling, and the same day I uh, I got it on Android and iOS. Of course, it takes like uh, a couple days to get approved on iOS. I also tested out to see if it would work on Facebook, which it did, and I was able to put it on Flash portals. The only thing I had to reprogram was in-app purchases and ads, but other, other than that, everything else, all the code got to stay the same. So it's a great way to quickly deploy to um, the most amount of platforms. And I uh, tested performance. It works as well as uh, Unity. All right, that's my fault. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm close that. Yeah, Any questions on any of that, guys? Yeah, what, uh, what exactly is Starling? So, I'm only aware of, aware of uh, a way. Yeah, so like Flash has, has <coughs> screens and Adobe Air has a bunch of like uh, classes. But Starling, Starling is made just for mobile. So it'll handle the touch events. It takes advantage of stage 3D to, to, um, to use the GPU so that way it can uh, work quicker than if you just made uh, a game uh, using Adobe Air. Basically, uh, it caters to mobile development. And um, a lot of there's a lot of tools around it uh, to help you do mobile development as well. So it's, I guess, 